So here is um, AP question from 1975, and I'm trying to find the ones with oscillations. So you see examples um, explained. So the pendulum consists of a small object of mass m. So the mass of an object is given m. Um, and the length of the cord is l. And it is attached under an angle of 60 degrees. The, the theta is 60 degrees given and uh, the diagram shown above this thing is burned so that the pendulum is released to swing to and fro in the space below draw a force diagram identifying all the forces acting on the object while it is held by the string so I'm going to show all the forces acting on the object. I have the force acting this way. I'm going to call this one force because it will disappear as soon as the string burns. But I'm going to keep this force, call it tension, because that one is going to stay even after the other one burned out. And I have one more force, Mg. So these are the only three forces that the the, um, the small object experiences. And then make sure that when you draw your forces, your forces touch the object itself. For the P part, they ask you to determine the tension in the cord before the string is burned. So I'm going to make my X and Y coordinates or components of the tension force because they are the only ones that don't align with the force um, that is asked then let's look back and see this angle is theta so this one is theta that means this angle is also theta let me show you right here so this angle and this angle are the same so that means this angle is theta <clears throat> so I'm going to have this side T cosine and that side is going to be my T sine. So let's write the X and Y coordinates acting on my um, object. Here is the object. And I'm going to write the system. I have Y coordinates and I have X coordinates. So my y coordinates have t cosine theta minus mg equals to zero. And my x coordinates have t sine theta. And I'm going to choose my left side to be positive. Minus the force is equal to zero. So because T cosine, cosine is known because we know the angle and M is given and G is known. So I can solve for um, my B part. Let me show this that I'm solving for B. So I can show that my T is equal to MG divided by cosine theta and actually if I plug in cosine theta so um, t is equal to mg divided by cosine of 60 and cosine of 60 is equal to one half so that gives me 2mg. So for our C part, we have to show that the cord is strong enough to support the object before the string is burned. Um, is also strong enough to support the object as it passes through the bottom of the swing. I'm going to use potential energy at, let's call this one point A and this one point B. So 
So I'm going to say potential energy at A. Potential energy at A. Is going to be equal to the kinetic energy at B. So I have MGH is equal to one half mv squared and this is the maximum velocity so this is going to be the velocity maximum all the way at the bottom um my h is if you look through if you look through this triangle if you look through this triangle this is your L sine, and the vertical part is your L cosine. So what's left right here for H, this whole length is L. So for left for H, I'm going to write it right here. H is equal to L minus L cosine. Theta. Now I'm going to plug it in back here. So I have 2mg. Instead of h, I have L minus L cosine. Theta equals to mv squared maximum. The mass and the mass can be cancelled. So your maximum velocity. is equal to the square root of 2. I'm going to factor out L from the parentheses, G. And here I have 1 minus cosine, and the angle is 60. So the maximum velocity is equal to the square root of Two L G and the cosine of sixty is one half, so I have one half. So it's just the square root of L G. Let's see if I can fit this over here. So um the force is acting at the bottom. I have the tension force acting at the bottom to know what the tension is equal to in this case. And I have M G acting at the bottom. And because it's a circular motion, I also have centripetal acceleration. So my centripetal acceleration is going to be this way. And I'm going to write the forces acting on the object all the way at the bottom. So I have positive tension minus mg is equal to mac. And that is equal to m v squared over r and r is l in this case so i have the tension minus mg is equal to m v squared that's your maximum velocity so this is maximum velocity so v squared is going to be lg over l so that gives me t is equal to l and l cancels and then i move mg to the other side so i have 2 mg so all the way at the bottom the tension is also equal to 2 mg and the tension used to be equal to 2 mg which proves that the cord should be able to handle the mass at its lowest position as it passes through the bottom of the swing. For D part, um, I drew a picture for you here. So after the string is cut, there is no more force acting on it um, to the right. So I only have the tension force and Mg. And my uh, purple 
force, I call it the restoring force, is the one that is going to be causing an object to move um, in a circular motion. Um, the question here is, so this is the restoring force. The question here is, this pendulum going to move under simple harmonic motion? And I'm not sure if one of the videos, but the book probably mentioned somewhere, in order for, um, for simple harmonic motion, in order for the pendulum to be in simple harmonic motion, your theta must be less than 15 degrees. And in this case, it's greater than 15 degrees. So in this case, it's not simple harmonic motion. And it is not simple harmonic motion because um, the friction, the uh, air resistance, um, all the other factors, they will not allow the object move in uh, simple harmonic motion, restoring uh, for a long time.